So it should be recording. Yeah? yeah. Right. So if um, in here, if I press um, Alt, you know the Alt key? Yeah. Well, it is on a Mac. I don't know what it is on a PC. But the Alt key, and then click on the whites. If you look, can you see what happens to the picture? Yeah. Right? So that's showing me the areas of white that are burnt out so if i draw that back can you see it's pulling some of those back in yeah all right but if i go right down i've still got areas that there's nothing there all right so can you see the difference yeah yeah so there are areas in that picture where there's no digital information right which we know because we've got this white spike yeah is that making sense yeah right now if we do the same with the black so we press alt click on the black slider and we can move that until the blacks start to come in. So if I get that so that the blacks are just starting to show, can you see that around yeah. the hair? Yeah. Just there, yeah. I know that I've set my black black point. Color. Yeah, I've set yeah. my black point, um, and I know that her hair, even though it's very black, it has got digital information, so I could pull some shadows out of it, some texture, etc. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I've pulled that slider back right back on the whites, but um, it's still not getting me a lot of this digital information. Okay? Yep. And then you've got clarity yep. and vibrance here. These are the main ones. The shadows, can you see where my pointer is? Yeah. Yeah, the shadows and the highlights here, they're quite good. But can you see, as I pull, because there's no digital information in this white, if I pull the highlights back to try to get some digital information in there, can you see all it does is go grey? Yeah. Yeah, that's because all I'm doing is darkening nothing. Okay, and the same with the shadows. That works better because we know that the shadows aren't blasted out. So can you see, I can pull that up. Yep. Can you see that's putting, so if I put yep, that there. Detailing yeah, so you sort of think, oh, I want a bit more brightness in here. Yeah. I can pull that black up. But can you see that when I do that, that brightens the black in her as well, doesn't it? Yes. And in here. Right, so what I'm going to show you now is how to control that. Right, are you with me so far? Yeah, I'm just trying to not jot a few words. Uh, yeah, yeah, if there. you want me to just shut up for a minute, no, then no, just say fine. shut up. <laughs> okay. okay, so that's all on this first button here. All right, yeah. in RAW, you've got loads of others. Don't worry about any of the others except for sharpening. Right, if it's a RAW file, it's got no sharpening applied, so it'll be blurry. So you have to apply sharpening. Now, the temptation is, oh, right, I want it real sharp. I'll put it right up there, but it'll go horrible. It'll look awful, right? You only ever want to add about 25 points of sharpening. Okay? Yeah. Then the luminance, the noise, leave that down, provided you've used a low ISO. If you took yeah. it indoors in the dark and you got a noisy image then you can push that up a bit to get rid of a bit of the noise. Yeah. All good so far? Yeah. Right, and then the last one on here that you need to look at is that one there, which is lens correction, look. Yeah. Click on that, and provided you're using a proper lens, right, that won't let me do it. Sometimes when you're opening Camera Raw, there's a button there and it will say Apply Lens Profiles. You click on it and it, and it looks at your EXIF data and goes, yeah, you use the 60 to 200 zoom, blah, 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 blah. And it takes away the vignette in, it takes away the barrel distortion, etc. Right? Yeah. On this occasion, it hasn't got that option. Um, so I can only do it manually, but we'll, there's a way you can do it not manually. All right? So ignore that one. So all we've done is set the white balance, yes, in the first yeah. one, and we've added some sharpening. And then we click OK, and that opens that in, in the. Um, Photoshop, all right? And then what I'm going to do is, what I always tend to do, is I do a duplicate of my original layer so as I can compare what I've done with what I started with. Yeah. Okay? And the easiest way to do that is click on it, drag it down into the new, you know, your new layer thing, let go, and it'll just duplicate it. Yeah. Okay? I always work on the original background because sometimes when you apply filters it, it needs to be working on the background layer otherwise it doesn't recognize it so what i do is double click that and just call it a ridge and i know that that's the original file 
but yeah. make sure I've got I'm working on the background and I'll turn that one off. Yeah. All right. Does that make sense? Because otherwise yeah. I'd see that and not that. Yeah? yeah. Right. Now we want to get rid of the lens distortion. And if it doesn't show up in the raw editor, what we can do is we can go up to um, uh, filter lens correction. All right. And that just opens it as a separate entity. Okay. And then what you can, can you see here? It's got my Canon profile. Yeah. Canon EOS Mark III, 24 to 105, and it's already applied that correction. Um, let me see if I can turn it off. Uh, can you see it, it corrects oh, yes. that barrel distortion and whatever? All right, yeah. so I've corrected my lens, click OK, and it opens it up in, eventually, opens it up in Photoshop again with my barrel yeah. distortion corrected. Right, so now can you see the difference between the original? Yeah. All right. Are you with me so far? Yeah. Okay. Um, and say so this should be recording. So, but I mean, say so if you start doing stuff and you think, "Oh crap, can't remember," just drop me a message or whatever. Right. So let's say we've done this. You know, we did the um, the shadows and the thing in the um, raw editor. Yeah. Yeah. First thing that we're going to look at actually using layers and things is. Um, this is before we even start doing your portrait editing. Let's say that this is all groovy, but we want to lighten this up and we want to lighten that up. Yeah. Okay. There's a billion and one ways you can do it, but one of the quickest and easiest ways is whenever you're using Photoshop, wherever possible, work non-destructively and on new layers. Because yeah. if something's on its own layer, you can turn it on and off or bin it or whatever. Right, so I've made new layer... And all I'm going to do is get white paint with my paintbrush. I don't know, what's happening here? Oh, it's cancelled that. Um, white paint with my paintbrush. 100%, 100% flow, 100% opacity, all right? And all I'm going to do, I'm going to do this real quick. If you were doing it for real, you'd take your time a bit more. All I'm doing is nothing. Why am I doing nothing? That's because I've got that top layer switched on. Ah, yes. You with me? Yeah. So if you try and do something, it doesn't happen, think why. What, what's wrong? And what it is is I've got that on. Yeah? Got, so yeah, it's hiding what I'm doing. All right? So all I'm doing is I'm going to paint that white. All right? This is your first piece of gold here. Yeah? Yeah. And then what you do is you go in here and you change the, change the blending mode, sometimes to overlay and sometimes to soft light. So try both. So we do soft light and try overlay. Overlay works best. And then because that's on its own layer, look, can you see I can turn it on and off? On and yeah. Right. But it's on its own layer, so I can change the opacity. So I can change how much that's affecting what's there. So can you see I've got real control over it? Yeah. All right. And you just turn it on and off. Piss, piss, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That's gold dust, isn't it? It's brilliant. It's such a simple thing. All right. But but you can use that. So can you see her face is a bit dark? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to do the same again, but I'm not going to do it on this layer. As I said, use new layers. Make yeah. a new layer, call it Annie's face, and all I'm going to do is do the same again. Get me white paint, put a blob on her face, change the blending mode to soft light. Uh, so no, I think I did overlay, didn't I? Overlay, pull the opacity back. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Don't you tell anybody this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but can you see what I mean? This is all stuff I sort of like discovered. But I say, it's once you know the basics, you think, oh, I wonder if this would work, and I wonder if that would work. That is so simple. But yeah. That makes so but again, if you zoom simple. in, so if I turn that on and off, right, but can you see we've got bleed around the edge? Yeah. Let me just turn that off. So around here, I've got bleeding. Yeah. Right, this is where what you do, you see this little symbol here? Uh, I've lost Down the here, oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a good thing about a Mac is if you. Oh, I don't do it. Um, that little symbol there. Yeah. Press that and it will add a mask. Have you used masks? I've not, no. Right. You've got a mask. If it's a white mask, to cut into the mask, to reveal what's underneath the mask, you use black paint with your brush. Yeah. If it's a black mask, you use white paint. So basically, on a white mask, black takes away and white will put back. So if I make my brush smaller, whoops, 
Uh, where are we here? Make my brush smaller. Okay, like that. Yeah. I've got a white mask, so I want black paint. And what we're saying is that we've got bleed around the edge of a head. Yeah. Yeah, on the brickwork. All right, so what yeah. I do is I make sure I've got the mask selected, not the paint, the mask. Then all yeah. you do is you go around with that. And just pull that And just in. take that bit out. <laughs> like that. And then that's gone, you see? Yeah. And then again, that's on its own layer, so I'm going to reduce that a bit less. So if we now zoom out and look at our picture, and we do a before and after. Can you see what I mean? That's unreal. I know. And we ain't done nothing, really. Okay. Now, to a, a, a lesser extent, so let's say, for example, yeah, I'm liking all... And this is where... This is the difference between using Photoshop creatively and just pissing about with it a little bit. Right, is what I do now is I look at that picture. I mean, I haven't done anything to her yet. What I do is I look at that picture and think, yeah, that's looking nice, but it's a bit flat. I want to add some depth. So again, I can put a new layer, change that to black, get my brush, 100% opacity, make my brush bigger, like that. Just put a black stripe across there. Well, that's dark blue, actually. I'm going to change that from before. Um, and then again, you just go up here, Change the blending mode to soft light. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's added. And it's put, but if I sort of think, yeah, but I don't want it all dark, I just want to put some dark on the bottom of them walls. Again, you just put a mask on it. Use your white mask, use your black paint, and just take that bit out. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. So can you see already we're starting to sculpt that image into something we want? Yeah. I've got to try and scroll some of this down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask a daft question now. Go on then. You, you're recording this. Will I see this video so I can then reference it? Yes. Yeah. It should be sorry. that that thing should be recording whatever's happening on my screen, but also us talking. Yeah. So it should be re recording the whole thing. Should okay. be. Yeah. I've never tried it before, but that's what it should be doing. I had a little practice earlier. Right, is that making sense? Yeah. Right, we'll bin that. Um. Okay. And then... Oh, drop my thing. Let's go into here. Tim's picks. I think the, the hardest thing I find is dropping in and out of it. As in... I'll come and do something tonight, but then it could be another week before I do anything. Yeah. It's dropping back. I think, right, okay, certain things, because I've done them so often, you're fairly comfortable with what happens. It's the others where I'll, I'll have some yeah. scroll piece of paper. Yeah. Or I might have pulled a, a video off YouTube or something. So I say, well, how did I do that? And just look at that again. Yeah, well, what I do is, is again, with my students, what I do, and this is why I sort of say, leave it two or three days before we do the next bit, or, or a week, or whatever you want. Yeah. I will say to my students, like, so, so soon, goes, oh, Alan, how do I do blah, 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 blah. So I'll go over and go, right, I'll give you a ping, and I'll do it for them, and then I'll bin it. I'll say, right, now you do it, but you do it four times, one after the other. And then yeah. by the time you've done it four times, it's going to go in it's more. Yeah. yeah. So I sort of say, right, do it, then bin it, do it again, bin it, do it again. You know, and then that way they usually. I always reckon that if you do it three or four times, one after the other, it kind of goes in there. But what you'll find is that with a lot of this stuff, is is once you know those basic kind of moves, it's quite intuitive. Do you know what I mean? You're you're sort of yeah. thinking, oh, I could use that for that. Do you know what I mean? Okay, so that shading and lightening the thing is is a cool thing. The other thing is is that if we do, if I just on this one, I'll quickly show. You. If I just put a new layer above that original. All right, it's not original. I've adjusted it in Lightroom. It's not your original original. But if I get this is quite cool. So let's say, for example, we. Um, I mean, I'll show you this proper later. Uh, let's say this is looking nice, but I want to warm it up a bit. I actually know it's right. I should, well, I will show you how to do that because I did it in this image. Okay, so if I click on that and I get a nice warm yellow. 
Yeah. Uh, or an orangey yellow, I think. Somewhere there. Okay. Get my brush. Oops. Get my brush. I've got my, a new layer. So I'm working on a new layer. If I yep. just put a big old blob of yellow there, right, and again, change the blending mode to soft light, I'll warm my picture up, right, um, soft light, and then pull the opacity back. All right, so it's subtle, but can you see that? Yep. It just warms it up a bit. I mean, that's a bit yellow, but can you see what I mean? So this is your picture that I edited. Yep. Okay, so this is what we're going to be looking at through these sort of three sessions really is um how to edit a portrait or something similar all right um so if you look me let me zoom in as close as i can without going off the screen right if you look at that okay i'll go through the steps of what i did okay now there's nothing there that's very clever all right but the image will go from that. Um, I have to turn all these on. Why is it not working? Yeah, from that to that. Yeah. Okay. So you can see a massive difference. That's nice. There's nothing wrong with that. She's a pretty girl. And it's a good photograph, good composition. But can you see that looks yeah. finished? And it's got a bit of a, a mood going on and a, a vibe. Right, so there's your first thing. And I'll go through what I did step by step. So after I've been through Lightroom and done my levels and, and, and the basic Lightroom adjustments, lens correction, etc. All right. I then get it into Photoshop. And then the first thing I did was I did, I thought, I looked around it even before, because she's got quite good skin if you look in. What yeah. you want to avoid is the plastic skin syndrome. Okay, she's got quite a cl clean skin, and it's got nice texture, so don't worry about softening it anymore. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't need it. So if it doesn't need it, don't do it. Do you know what I mean? There's one or two bits that we will sort out with it. but Right, so there's that. So the first thing I did was that. Did you see anything? No, that was too quick. No, that's, there's not a lot happened. Oh, right, yeah, but if yeah. I zoom in, so the first thing... Is I looked at her face and I thought, yeah, she's a pretty girl, but she got her nose is a bit wide. So can you see I, I yeah. pulled her nose in a bit, okay, and I've arched her eyebrows a bit. Now the arched eyebrows thing is just a me thing. I like arched eyebrows. I think they look sexy. I think they look interesting. So I often on models that arch the eyebrows. Okay, so that's that. I'll show you how we do this in a second. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right have you used the liquify tool i've not have you not it's no. pretty good okay and it's so easy oh. right so and then if we move down here and so what i did is i just looked at the model i thought right what, what's on there that I, i'm not happy with i thought i don't like this here look yeah that um bulge all right so what i did was part of that liquify was to pull that in. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see I pulled it in? Yeah. Right, but can you see what it's done to the edge of the chair? Yeah. It's Just got a smear in it, look. It's pulled that in as well. Yeah. Yeah? So what I yeah. then did was I repaired the chair. <laughs> okay, and all I did was use the clone stamp tool, okay, to copy a bit of this into there. Yeah. Have you used the clone tool? I've not, no. Right, that's okay. It's very easy. So, let me just show you. We'll go back. Let me turn that and that off. Okay. I won't do these, but I'll show you them. Okay. So if we go, there's the original. If you go filter, liquify, it'll open a new window, and there's your liquify. Okay. Ignore all this. All right. Let me just, uh, there's a bit where you can simplify it. The bit you want to look at is here. All right. Yeah. This thing if the model's like that, looking straight at you, you can slide these a bit, like, and he does the eyes and things. <laughs> but that's, you know, like, bloody portrait pro or whatever it's called? Yeah. It's basically that. So you don't want to be messing with that. Okay. These ones are the ones you look at. So that's the size of your brush, and that's the pressure of the brush. So that's how much effect it has. You want your pressure right down to about, you know, 9, 10, and then your brush size, whatever you think's fit. 
Right, so like, let's say later on, I want to put some volume into the hair. Okay, so if I leave that there, I'll leave it like it is. Okay, that top one is your is your um, warp, forward warp tool. Up. Okay, so I make the brush bigger. And you want the pressure low, make the brush bigger. So let's say that this, she's got lovely curly hair, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah, but can you see this is a bit boring here, it's a bit flat. Yeah. What the warp tool does is you can get hold of that and move it. Now, where was that again? Because I'm. Right, I was just something. That. That's out. okay. So it's filter. Filter. Liquify. Liquify, yeah. And it'll open that window. And then you just use that tool. You've got to be careful because what this does is it smudges pixels, basically. Do you know what I mean? So you can, you can very easily. There's loads of photos on the internet where people have walked it. Because if I say, like, oh, I want to pull that shoulder down, if you look at what happens to that bench, yeah? Yeah. Right, so if I pull the shoulder down, can you see it pulls the bench That's down? Thinking, yeah. And, it, and so the internet's full of people where they go, oh, yeah, the shoulder looks nice, yeah, but look at the state of the bench. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, but there is a, somewhere here, I'll never use it, but uh, one of these is a freeze mask tool... Smooth tool. One of these is I put it back to where it was tall. Reconstruct tool. So if you click on the reconstruct tool, it'll put it back. Ah, got you. Just rub over it and it'll put it back. Now that's basically just when you first open your tool, you've set the size of the brush, the yeah. pressure, and then you're just clicking. And I'll just click and drag, click and drag, click yeah. and drag. Yeah. Yep. And again, it's, it's this that I use to, so if, I, if you zoom in on the face there, and then go yep. back and get that tool at the top left again, change the brush size, okay, and then you just use that click on the nose and just, yeah, so I'm just pulling it in a bit, arch the eyebrows a little bit, come so in mean, if you decide she's got a bit of a thing going on with the chin or, do you know what I mean? Or a lips a bit uneven, or whatever. Do you know what I mean? You can then go in there and move it, and just move stuff about, really. <laughs> yeah, and again, he's yeah. like with that arm thing. You, you can. I mean, if I'd have done it a bit more carefully, you can actually do it with a smaller brush without dragging that chair in more than a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the liquify tool, right? So that's good, but use it carefully. Less is more. Yeah. Okay? So the first thing I did was liquify it, arch dry eyebrows, blah, blah, blah. Then I repaired the chair, right? And then the if you look, if I zoom in, right, everybody on the planet has got bags under their eyes. They've got dark lines and circles under their eyes. Yeah. And around here. If you lighten them up a bit, it lightens the model's face, right? You'll see that I use that, you know, that soft light thing where I said change the blend mode to soft light and yeah. overlay. I use soft light a lot. It's a smart little old thing. Okay, so just to show you what I did, okay, I'll go back to uh, light around the eyes. I'll go back to this original. I'll have to turn them off. I'll go back to that original and I'll put... So imagine I'm now... I'm further up here, but imagine I'm not. I want to lighten these dark shadows, yeah? Yeah. That we've all got. So, I, again, make a new layer, okay? And this is this is my go-to method for lightening shadows on the face or bags under the eyes, those kind of things, okay? And what I do is a new layer, change the blending mode to soft light, Okay, you want your brush with white paint. If you use white paint, it will lighten it. If you use black paint, it will darken it. Okay, I'll give you a minute to scribble that. Yeah. Okay, so what I do is, and the other thing I will say to students, if you're working on the eyes, zoom right in on the eyes so as you can see what you're working on. Do you know what I mean? Don't work from 100 miles away. Yeah. Okay, so I want to lighten this under here. So I've got a new layer. I've changed the blending mode to soft light, not overlay. I've got my brush with white paint. Okay, yeah. but
but you reduce the opacity of your brush right the way down to about four or five percent. Okay, the opacity wants to be right down. Right, and then what you do is you get your brush, and it wants to be a soft brush. Right, by that I mean is it you know up here are your brushes? Yeah. If you won't click on that little arrow, you got your size, but you've got your hardness here as well. Yep. Right over there gives you a very hard edge to your brush. Right over this side gives you a soft edge. You yep. want a very soft edge. All right, so I've got a brush with white paint, four or five or six percent opacity, and a soft brush. Then all I do, I'll zoom right in, you've got more chance of seeing what I'm doing. These dark areas here, I've got my new layer, soft light. All I'm doing is I'm going in there, and I'm just painting in there. Again, you change the size of your brush. Right, and if you sort of think it's a bit dark under there, I'll change that a little bit. Maybe take a little bit out under that lip. Okay. Now, if you look at that, it don't look like I've done much, does it? It's very subtle. Right, it's, it's not. When you turn this on and off. Yeah. Can you see the difference? Yeah. So if I now zoom out, if you look at that, it looks fine, but look how, can you see that opens a face up? Yeah. Yeah? Different again. Yeah. That just opens the face up. For, for such a simple thing as well. Yeah. But again, you've got to be careful you don't overdo it. And because I've done it on its own layer... If I think, oh, it's a bit too much, I can just reduce the opacity of that layer and it reduces the amount of the effect. Look. Yeah. Yeah? So I can just pull that back a bit and turn it on and off think, yeah, that's all. But it's subtle. Do you know what I mean? It's just subtle stuff. Right? So that's that. I'll bin that because we don't need that. So liquify, mended the chair. There's my lightning. Can you see it? So that's what I did yeah. when I edited your photo. Yeah. And then I've got my main liquify. Can you see that? Yeah. That's all I those other I... bits where I went back in. So can you see I've sculpted a chin because she's got quite yeah. a square jaw, so I've softened that a bit. She's got quite a hard jaw. Yeah. So if I zoom out a little bit and I've bubbled her hair a bit. Can you see I'll put... Right, here's a good one. Let me turn that off. That one. Right, so can you see we've got all this. That's a bit boring. Yeah. Can you hear me? Oh. Can't hear you. No, can't hear you. No. Oops. So I'll minimise that. Right, are we back? I've just got you, I've not got you. Ah, oh, right, screens. no, oh, I need to do the sharing thing, don't I? Wherever it is, where is it? Right. Hang on, view. Share screen. Yeah? Yeah, that's it. Right. Right, let me just turn that microphone, uh, that thing down a bit. Right, yes? All good? Yep, all good. Right, where do we bloody get to? Right, so there's the main liquid. Right, so if you look at that, this is boring. Yeah. Yeah? This is boring. That, can you see that bit of hair through there? Yeah. Now, I don't know whether you would notice, but I look at that, I think that's awful. Because it's straight. Yeah. Right? So, and this bit here. I don't like. Yeah, and this bit. Yeah. You know I mean? And it's those little bits of attention to detail that change an okay edit into a good edit. So when I do the main liquify, can you see the difference? 
Yeah. I was going to say, how do you pick those bits? Well, this is the is art. Exactly the same. This is the art bit. You see, we're having an understanding of art, and and you've got an eye for it. Do you know what I mean? Because to me, when I look at that picture, they leap out. To me, they leap out as like, oh my god, that needs sorting out. <laughs> yeah, right. The next thing is that, that done exactly the same way. Yeah, with a liquefier tool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just pull it about. Yeah. So can you see yeah. the difference it makes? Yeah, definitely. Nobody would notice, but they would subconsciously. Like, subconsciously, an art editor would. He'd look at that and go, "Oh, don't all that straight bit there, and this bit, and that's a bit dead." Do you know what I mean? But when you pump it up, you curve it a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Make yeah. your hair a bit fuller. Right, and then this is your... Oops, Ooh, I've never done that before. This is your next piece of gold. See your eyes? Yeah. 5% <laughs> bigger. Okay. Now, a lot of magazines use this because humans find big eyes appealing and sexy and whatever. So if we make her eyes bigger, it makes her more appealing and more sexy and blah, blah, blah. And that's as simple as that. And I'll show you how we do that. Again, this is a piece of gold dust. Don't share it around. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. Honest to God. There's very few people do this, I don't think. But it does make a difference. But again, less is more. But it's a subconscious thing. You look at that and you wouldn't know. But your brain knows. Do you know what I mean? You will find her more yeah. attractive like that than you would like that. Yeah. Yeah? All right? It's just so subtle. Yeah. But, but you add it all together. Yeah. And it makes a big difference. Right, so I'll show you how I do that. Is that all good? Yeah, that's all good. That's okay. Right, so I've got my layer there. Ignore these two here, all right, and I'll show you how I do that. So what you do is you make sure you've got a normal layer selected, so one that's got the solid image on, you know, not one that's yep. sort of like half see-through or something. All right, and then you go up here and you pick that tool there, which is the lasso tool. Yeah, I'm okay. just going to jump in. How have you got that other layer then? Is that a duplicate? What layer? Um, that there. one that you, no, down one. There. One that you work on now, yeah. No, that's my liquefy layer. Ah, when, right. When yeah, you sorry. come out of liquefy, it will create a new layer. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that's it. Yeah. yeah, got it. Okay. So then using that new layer, I get the um, lasso tool. Yeah. Over on the left there. All right. Can you see it's got a feather here? Yeah. For this, it, it, if it's got a little bit of feather, it don't matter. But if it's got no feather, it doesn't matter either because when it doesn't, it won't affect it. You'll see. Okay. So if I just zoom in so we can see what we're doing, and you'll be able to see better anyway. Right. So what I do is do the eyes one at a time. All you do is you get that lasso tool, and you just very vaguely. I don't know. I hate it when it does this. Occasionally, Photoshop just plays silly buggers. Look, it's not happening. Nothing's happening. Right, so if I go File, I'm going to have to close Photoshop and come back in again. It's frozen. Um, yeah, I will do. File, Save. Photoshop, quick Photoshop. Quickly, that one. Does that quit? Yeah. Yeah, occasionally it does this. I think some of it is because I'm running that recording thing as well. Yeah. Yeah, my biggest problem in a minute, at the minute, I use the main PC for most of my editing because I don't like the touch the touchpad on the laptop. All oh, right. I've got I've got a mouse for it, and I keep meaning to. Have you got a in. Have you got a tablet? I have, yeah. Yeah, make sure you it's use not... a tablet. Get used to use. It takes a bit of getting used to. Yeah. But you can't do a lot of this stuff with a mouse because you haven't got the control. 
so get used to using a tablet. Right, so if we zoom in, hopefully this will work now. All right, just loosely, can you see I'm not bothered? Just draw around yeah. that eye. Okay, then what we need to do is copy that selection. You know what that is, don't you? You know what a selection is, yeah? Yeah. Sure. Okay, so I've made a selection. When you make a selection with any of these selection tools at the top here, whatever yeah. you do next only happens with what to what's in that selection. Yeah. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to copy that eye to a new layer so that I can change its size without affecting the original picture. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And the easiest way to do that is with a shortcut. So if you just do Command or Control, I think it is. Yeah. Command and con or Control and then J. Command, Control, J. And that will copy it to its own layer. So if I turn all of these off now, can you see I've just got that eye yeah, just on that one, one layer? Yeah. Okay. Right, so that's that eye on its own layer. So now whatever I do to that eye only happens to that eye on that layer there. Yeah. yeah. I want to make it bigger. So what we do is you go, Command T will bring up the transform box. Yeah. Okay. And if you go to the top up here, look, can you see where I am? Yeah. You've got width 100%, and then a link, and then height 100%. Yeah? Yeah. You click in there, it's fiddly, but you click in there. Can you see where I've clicked? Yeah. Right. Backspace, and then put a 5 yeah. in instead of a 100. So we're increasing the size by 5%. Yeah? Yeah. Can you see yeah. that? Yeah, I've just got to drop this down then. Okay. And that was the hot white not it? Yeah, but then you click on that little link and that will apply the same thing to the width. Ah, so I've, right, yeah. Yeah, so I've increased the height and the width, otherwise you'll end up looking Chinese. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And then just hit return, and that will set that. Yeah, I think what I need to try and do is have a play tomorrow night, if I get chance, and have, a, have a, an experiment with it, even if it's mm. purely to ruin a picture. Just yeah, to just, get used it to doesn't matter. You're not. It's not going. Nobody's going to die. Do you know what I mean? It's no. just, just. It, it, I mean, that's what I do. Is I sort of. Like, I just play, and, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it don't. And often, even I try to do something, and it doesn't work. You think, oh, well, I'll try a different way. And, and sometimes I might have to try three different ways of doing something, but I'll get there in the end. Right. I mean, I'm going through this picture that I've already edited. We haven't even started editing a new one yet. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so there's that layer. So if I turn that on and off now, can you see? Yeah. Right. But if I zoom right in, I mean, it doesn't show very well, but if I turn that on and off, can you see that it doesn't fit in nicely, does it? It does, actually, but it, it might not. So what we need to do, let me just pin that, and I'll do it again with no feather, and it will show it up more. So let me just select my thing, and I'll take that feather off. Zero. And I'll deliberately make it look shit. So I'll go really wide like that. Okay. And then do Command J, yeah, yeah, to copy it to its own layer. Then I need to yeah. do what? Control T or Command T. T brilliant, control. right? And that gets that up. Then I Transport. need to go up here. Oops. Oh come on, it's fiddly. Change that to five, and click on that to link it, and then hit Return or double click on it to fix it. Can you see now? Yes. Round there. It don't fit, does it? Because I've made it yeah. bigger, so now it don't line up anymore. Does that make sense? Yes. That's why sometimes if you have it a bit soft, it can trick you into it looks like it fits, but that's why it's sometimes best not to have any feather. So what we've got to do is get rid of some of this, isn't it? All I want left yeah. is this sort of eye bit, really. How can I get rid yeah. of that? Would uh, On that layer, put a mask on that's and then it. go on. Yeah. 
put a mask white. on it, white mask. I want black paint with my brush, all right? Yes, I've got it on. Turn your opacity paint. right up, but then pull it back a little bit, just so it's not under completely. You st again, you want a soft brush. And all we do is we go around there and take some of that out. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Around there like that. And then I'll turn it on and off to check that I've got it. Can you see? And we're done. Yeah. So that's one <laughs> eye done. All right. So can you see? So that's one yeah. eye done. So what we do now is we need to cut that eye out of the picture. So don't forget. And do that on another layer as well. Yeah. But we need to go layer. back to this picture layer first, don't we? Because we've got yeah. to nick a bit off of that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's, that's the image that you yeah, copy. That's the bit that I'm taking a bit from. So, again, is I just go around the eye like that. Control yeah. J to put it on its own layer. Control T to give me the adjustment. Can you see, is once you get going on this, you get yeah. a bit of a workflow going. And you yeah. can soon start to whiz through stuff. And that's that done. All right, so now if I zoom in. Now I hit, I'm going, going quick now just to show you, once you know where you're at, how quick you can do this stuff. All right, and then we're done. So that took me about what less than half a minute, I think, didn't it? Yeah, almost eight seconds, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Right. Can you see? I've still got a bit of weirdness up in this eyebrow look here that I missed. Yeah. So that's why yeah. I turn it on and off. I think. Yeah, I need to get rid of that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's me. Eyebrow adjustments. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Right, so I'll get rid of them two now because they're me um, demonstration ones. So there's the ones for the eyes bigger. All right, so we've done levels in um, Lightroom and everything. We've used Liquify to get rid of lumps and bumps. Okay, we've reshaped the face a little bit with Liquify. We've made the hair look more interesting with Liquify. Yeah. We've took the shadows out under her eyes. Oh, no, we haven't. That's further up. Oh, no, that is. I've done that. Yeah, light around the eyes. Yeah. That was it. Yes, I've done yeah. that. Okay. So we've lightened around the eyes using the soft light thing. Okay. So that's now approaching a point where you think, yeah, that's, that's good to go, really. All right. That's okay. So mm -hmm. a lot of people now is they'd stop there and say, that's done. Right. But because I... Um, they're sending to up my own ass because I'm an artist. I paint and I understand light and paint and art and pictures and stuff. Is is at that point where I think right now let's make it interesting to look at. It's correct. Everything's good, but now I want to add that art element. So that's what this yep. last bit is. So there's my sunshine. That's that's just yep. sort of think the sun's coming from this direction. That's that thing I showed you where I just painted a bit of orange. Yeah, in that corner. And yeah. change the blend mode to overlay. Okay, so if I just quickly put that back to normal, I'll, I'll reduce your opacity right down as well, so it doesn't show very well. Right, so there's that. And then I thought, right, I've got my light coming in here. If I've got light coming in here, it stands to reason it'd be darker down here. Yeah. So what I did is I just put a bit of dark down there. Can you see it's subtle? But can yeah. you see it's starting to give it yeah. depth? And, yep. and form, yeah. And then yeah. I thought, right, I want to make it make it look like it's a sunny day. So all I did was overall sun. And how did you do that? The same way um, you did. I, you know, I can't remember. I got a feeling all I did was put a whole layer of um, orange on it. I just reduced the. I don't know. Let's have a play. Um, let me put a layer on there. Get the paint bucket. Get some yellow. Fill it with yellow. Yeah, I probably did that. But can you see it's real subtle? There's only 5% look. Yeah, just enough to just give it a, a bit of warmth. It brightens it up, yeah. It just puts a little bit of warmth into it. Yeah. Right, so that's that. So that's all looking good now. So it's looking like a summer's day. It's all nice and warm. Got a bit of light up here, a little bit of dark down here. But what I want to do now is focus attention on... Let me just do a little thing here. 
Right, we've missed a step. That's what I'll show you that in another thing when we do the portrait. I want to... When I look at that picture, you look at that and you look at the face, right? But there's too much stuff going on around it that, to me, is distracting. Right? Yeah. I want to pull the focus onto the face because that's the important bit. This isn't important. That's not important. These leaves aren't important. This is the bit, isn't it? Yeah? Yeah. So what I do is I put a vignette around it. Can you see the difference that makes? Yeah. Okay, how much that yeah. makes you focus on her face, not on the nonsense that's going on around her. And all that yeah. is is a vignette that I do myself with that soft light again. So if I bin that, and all you do is you click in there. Oh, no, sorry, that one. Get the elliptical marquee tool. So that's the elliptical selection. But this time, yeah. put 250s worth of, of blur on the edge. So you don't get a hard edge selection, you get a, a soft edge selection. So it's like a soft blur, right? Yeah. Drag that round there like that. Okay, and then move it so it's around her. All right, make a new layer. Do it on a new layer, for God's sake. All right. Yeah. Now, do you remember I said what happens happens inside the selection? Yes. Well, I want it to happen outside the selection, don't I? Because I want to yeah. make the outside darker. So you go up to select look and inverse. So invert the selection. So can you see now? Uh, yeah, you've got the dotted all the way around. The outside, outside selected. Well. I've got my own layer, so what I do now is I get black with my paint bucket tool, so that'll fill yeah. it. Click in there, and that fills it with black, and then I'll go select, deselect. So that's filled it with black, but then if you change that to soft light, it does that. Just, and, then, yeah. and, and then just pull the thing back. Now, the reason you do it with soft if I put that back to normal, right, and you think, well, why don't you just do it black and reduce the opacity? That's because black affects everything the same, right? You're basically fading the black. If you do it with soft light, what soft light does, it affects dark bits more than it affects light bits. So can you see down here, it ain't doing a lot. Yeah. Right? So it's it's like intelligent, you know what I mean? It's not just making everything look. So if I'll put it back to normal. All right? So you want that soft light... But that's too much. So what we do is, because it's on its own layer, we can pull the opacity back yeah. until we get it to where we want it. That's still too much. So again, less is more. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That okay, so yeah. we've gone from that to that. Yeah? Yeah. Now, if, I, if I did that, if I did that myself in real time, that would probably take me 10 minutes from start to finish. Okay. Yeah. Now, do you know Damien Pell? Of course I don't know. Right, I think he's been up to the um, Andrews a couple of times. But I've talked with him on Facebook. Well, I've just edited a load of photographs for him from photo shoots that he's done because he does it, but it takes him two hours a picture. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? So he's paid me to do it. Do you know what I mean? But I charge him, I think I've only charged him about three quid, four quid a picture, but I'm doing me 10 minutes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'll sit here listening to me tunes. I'll play on Photoshop anyway. Do you know what I mean? So you sort of like, so can you see what I mean? So you've got from that to that. Yeah, I'll say it's amazing that. But difference. if you look at that in isolation, you don't think, cool, that's a lot of work, do you? It, it, it's it's how much it's changed. But, but then not you, noticeably. You show, yeah, it, it's not. I would say it's, it, it's all subtle, but. Yes. It, you almost want to say not noticeable. It's not. No, that's your idea. It's, it's, you see, all I was say is that good Photoshop work, you shouldn't be able to see it's been done. It should be invisible. If nobody yeah. comments on, oh, nice Photoshop work, then you've done a good job. Because if you look at that, if you show that to 100 people, 99% of them would go, cool, that's nice photo. 
They wouldn't go, oh, yeah, but you Photoshop this, you Photoshop that. I bet if she looked at that, she'd go, cool, that's a good photograph of me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? She wouldn't go, oh, you've made my eyes bigger. Oh, you've done my thing with my hair. You know, because she'd just look at that and think, cool, that's a good photograph of me. But she wouldn't yeah, be able to tell you why. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's so sort of lifelike. Yeah. Or, or, or the, the, the differences are enough to make. Yeah. The image far better, but yeah, but it's, not, it's not like it's not unrecognizable. You put a sci fi background or something no. where it's completely different. No, no, it's quite a subtle, yeah. So, there you go. I think we'll leave Brilliant. it there. <laughs> so, you've got plenty yeah. to play with there. Have a little play. Um, let me just stop this recording thing.